What's up? This is Lenny and Lucas from Down Again, and this is our chapter of As the Story Grows. Welcome to the next chapter of As the Story Grows. I'm Brian Patton. This week, I welcome Lenny, Lucas, and Alex from Down Again to the show. Former Scars of Tomorrow bassist Bob Bradley is the band's PR manager, and he hit me up with the album, and I loved it so much, I decided to bring the guys on the podcast. They just released their debut record, The Devil is a Gentleman, independently. A link to stream the record is in the show notes on asthestorygrows.com. Check it out. I want to say hello and thanks for listening to all the new subscribers to the show on YouTube. Thanks for checking it out. All right. Enjoy this week's chat with Down Again. How you guys doing? I guess it's the afternoon where you are, or evening, early evening, right? Doing pretty good here. It's a nice 95 degrees here in California. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's the same out here on the East Coast, so it's... <laughs> what part of the East Coast are you at? Philadelphia. Oh, okay. Yeah. I uh, used to live in Georgia, and I do miss that weather over there. Oh, uh, yeah. So you're, you're originally from Georgia? No, no, uh, from here, from the California, just went there to work for a little while and then came back. Gotcha. Gotcha. What were you doing in Georgia? Uh, partying for a year. Uh, no, I, <laughs> I just got married. Uh, me and my wife moved down there. Uh, we have some family down there, spent some time with family, and then came back here after a year. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, what was growing up like for you, too? Uh, for me, uh grew up right outside of San Francisco and uh my family we did a lot of boating and camping and outdoorsy stuff so uh I did sports year round lots of skating uh pretty much just always outside Yeah for me it's kind of the same thing as me and Lenny always talk about cuz we met each other later in life but we always like our whole lives we knew people that knew both of us like separately so we had <laughs> mutual friends our whole entire lives we just didn't connect and so growing up it's something we always said like how did we miss each other like we could have met when we were five but instead we met when we were like 18. that's awesome that's hilarious what got each of you into music uh man i i mean i i liked music my whole life but really what got me into like post hardcore and like into this whole music scene was my cousin Nathan he's a uh, about a year older than me and it's probably around middle school he started listening to like Under Oath and all of these like different post hardcore bands and he would show them to me and it was like the coolest thing ever and I just got obsessed and started finding bands on like MySpace and Pure Volume <laughs> and all oh, my music sites so yeah, for me, I was very, very fortunate. My father pretty much plays every instrument that there is. Uh, he was always like an 80s rock guy. So he would, we always had drum sets and pianos and guitars lying around. And I was just lucky enough that he let me smash on them. So uh, it was real funny because he used to make me learn like the drums to Pink Floyd songs and stuff <laughs> so that he could play guitar to it. Uh, and then as I got older, um, you know, through MySpace and stuff like that, you know, when you, as you get older, your friends show you new bands. And I went from like 80s rock and I found post hardcore music and I was like, 
this is it. And that's kind of when me and my dad stopped liking the same music because he stopped <laughs> rock. Uh, and then my, you know, my forecast turned into double bass and stuff like that. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Was drums? Uh, I mean, that was just your dad's influence, and in you playing drums. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, thankfully, my dad is also a piano player, guitar player. So I, you know, picked up piano and guitar. Uh, and down again, I, you know, I do all the guitar too and all the piano. Um, drums was just something that we had in the house. It, it came the easiest. It's definitely not my favorite instrument. It just seems like it's the easiest to me. So uh, it was. I just got as good as I could, as fast as I could. That's cool. And Lenny, you play guitar too. Yeah, yeah, I do guitar and then vocals. Yeah. What uh, was there a moment where you uh, knew you could sing? Did you sing in like choir or <laughs> church or something it, growing up? Or? It, it's a funny story because growing up, I had like no singing ability. And I, I think I just wanted to be able to sing so bad that I spent like 20 years singing really, really badly before I started somehow figuring it out. I like willed myself to learn how to sing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can vouch for that because uh, we have some early recordings when we were in a different band. And he's lucky that he was my best friend because I was not good singing. <laughs> but, uh. Did you did you try just uh, singing right away, or did you want to do more screaming at any point? Well, actually, before I was ever able to sing, back like in high school, I was in like metalcore bands doing like just screaming. So I've been screaming longer than I've been able to sing. Actually, <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, when did each of you start playing in bands, and then what <laughs> kind of bands? And- that uh, hit me with those awesome high school band names. Oh no! <laughs> you go ahead first. Uh, so I got. I was super lucky. I had some friends who were in a relatively big band at the time. Uh, we were called Makeshift Spaceship. Um, that was in high school. So I joined that band as a piano slash guitar player in like 2010, and we were basically just like synth post hardcore like. A, basically mixing like bands like attack attack at the time and asking alexandria and you know the albums that they were making at the time and we were just up there basically copying that and it was just hilarious looking back at you know the music i used to play in 2010 versus now (laughs) yeah my first band was called enter eternity and it was we were basically trying to sound like for today but like Again, you look back at the recordings and it's just like <laughs> such like a pathetic imitation. <laughs> uh. Oh, man. And then uh, after that, I was in this like acoustic band that turned into like an alternative pop band called Forever for a Second, which uh, I eventually recruited Lucas to be the drummer of. And... Uh, Again, it's just like that one was like copying all the time low, pretty much. Yeah. So it was like bounced from one extreme to the other, and now we kind of fell in the middle. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, I was in a band, and like I, I, I wanted to be Hope's Fall in that band, and then I quit to like try to be Dashboard Confessional. So <laughs> I get the extreme. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, this is a long time ago. Uh, uh, that's awesome. How did uh, Down Again form? Uh, well, it it kind of formed me and Lucas, you know, forever for a second, kind of died. And we were just sitting one day and we were like, dude, let's write some like emo ass post hardcore music. Like, just just sitting in the room no really idea that it was going to turn into anything and uh just started writing some songs and we were like i i think we need to make an album (laughs) and it it just really kind of happened organically like there was no really pre-planning it just happened i guess yeah it was interesting because uh the three members of the band we were just three members of a separate band and we kind of just stopped progressing, you know, in music. We were all pursuing other careers. Um, I had just finished college or was just finishing college. 
Hey, speaking of the devil, our man Alex uh, was still in college. Uh, Lenny was, you know, in the union and that band forever for a second. We just weren't doing anything anymore as that under that band. And one day we still had music in us, though, and we we're still writing music. And it was just so different than anything that we had tried to copy before because we weren't copying anything now. We were just writing, you know, the music that we liked. Um, and we just think that we thought that, you know, this, we can't really put this out as what we used to be. So let's put this out, you know, as something new. That's awesome. What's up, Alex? <laughs> hey, how you doing, Ryan? Good, man. Um, I already asked the other two guys, uh, what got you into music? You relate to the game one. <laughs> um, it was kind of, it's kind of a weird story. Um, my mom just randomly surprised us with uh, guitars one day because her coworker was like sold guitars and something or something like that, and she just sold uh, guitars. Uh, yeah, she was just like, I want my kids to play guitars. So um, <laughs> yeah, so she randomly brought home guitars and then was like, Hey, you guys are gonna go to guitar lessons at this community center. And I did about two of those and uh, decided that I didn't like it. <laughs> and then uh, I started hanging out with a friend that was really into music and started was like playing guitar and stuff. And I would just hang out with him all the time. This is probably in like sixth grade. And then I went with him to uh, like a guitar lesson or something. And I picked up a bass and I like started playing. And I was like, oh, this is a lot more fun. I like this. And so that's where I started like really getting into like bass and stuff so i've been doing that since about like sixth grade uh, and then just kind of fell into playing heavy music or like heavier music yeah was that not an influence of yours um no it was, it was kind of like i had always liked that stuff like my brother was into like <clears throat> like ozzy and stuff like that and like that was cool to me but it didn't really click and then i um about like I don't know, maybe sixth grade, I started getting like really into like punk and like emo stuff, and like listening to like bands like Atreyu and listening to bands like My Chemical Romance and stuff like that, and Senses Fail, and I kind of like clicked more with that stuff than I did with like the hair metal or like the glam rock that I was like exposed to as like a young child. Gotcha, that's cool. Um, so, what year did the band form? Uh, I, 20, I guess technically 2019. Okay, so recently. Yeah. But us three were, were, we were the only members of the band forever for a second that we were before. So that band we formed in like the 2012-ish, right? 11-ish, Lenny? I want to say 12. Then, yeah, and then we just decided after we were writing new music, like, okay, let's just start a new band. But the three of us have been playing music together for, you know, almost eight years. That's cool. What was your uh, goal music wise uh, when writing? Like, did you have a specific sound you were looking for, or was it just what came naturally? I think it was pretty interesting because we went into it without having really any specific goal or any idea what we were going to write. Like, we wrote, we wrote one song. And then, you know, we wrote another song that didn't really sound like it. And all of a sudden, we're, like, branching out into, like, different genres. And it, it didn't have any direction at first. So uh, it, it was interesting. As we can, continued writing, it just kept getting further into the post-hardcore genre. And then, like, some of the songs, we would go back and rewrite them to make them sound more, like... <laughs> The newer stuff, I don't know. It, it was an interesting process. Yeah, when we, we started writing, at first it was purely for fun, and we just had a collection of songs that were like in this emo alternative meeting post-hardcore, and then we just had so much music, and we were so inspired that we ended up writing more and more songs, and that's when we like, whoa, we have pretty much an album right here. We had more than an album. We had like 21 songs that we had to narrow down to the 13 on the album so um, yeah we kind of just picked the 13 that that just best matched each other i brought bare knuckles and i came out swinging i was unaware that the situation was gone by was gone by
You guys uh, just released your debut record, The Devil is a Gentleman. Um, let me start by asking, what's it like to uh, release a new album, your debut album, in the midst of a pandemic? It's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you go ahead, Alex. It's, it's like the worst and the best at the same time. Uh, it, it really it kind of works for us because we're in like literally every part of California. So I'm here. <laughs> I'm in Long Beach. Lucas is in Redding, and Lenny is in the Bay Area. So like we're all pretty far apart. Um, so it's cool that we can release this and like not have to like break our backs right now trying to like get shows and do stuff like that. And we're just able to like promote on the internet and. Uh, but it, it sucks because also we can't play shows and like promote in person and like, you know, like see each other and like, you know, play music. Yeah. Did you guys have like release shows previously lined up or a tour that you were going to do after the album dropped? So we were working on planning one. Nothing ever got set in stone. So, I mean, it could have been worse, but. We were definitely planning on doing a little West Coast tour to promote the album when it came out, and that fell apart. So that was pretty... Yeah, because the pandemic cool. struck, the pandemic struck, like, before we even had a date to release the album, the pandemic was taken off, and so that was pretty much cut down before we even had the chance to, to get something in stone. Yeah. Has it been a little easier working on like back end stuff for the record? Because there's, I mean, you guys are all far apart, but you have technology to be able to kind of chat like we are right now and, and work through details for getting something released and out there and a social media campaign. Yeah, I think we've, we've been in constant communication. We we're sending each other, you know, texts and stuff sending each other voice memos and little garage band demos all the time so we're still you know working on new music and then you know trying to put things together to promote the album uh we're gonna be uh hopefully recording some new music here pretty soon so we're, we're keeping busy despite not being able to play shows that's cool. So let's talk about The Devil is a Gentleman. Bob sent me the record. It's uh, it's phenomenal. I really like it. Um, that's why Thank I want to talk to you guys about it um, and be able to share some songs with people. Um, it's it's super cool. Uh, talk to me about the writing and recording process of this record. You want to take that one, Lucas? Yeah, so the, uh, the writing process was insane because prior to this album, like we had either written post hardcore like da -da 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 -da, chug a chug a breakdown or poppy alternative and so we basically decided let's stop copying people and just write music that we like but it was strange because we almost had to learn like we just had never played this kind of music before and we had loved this kind of music our whole lives we just hadn't been in bands like this so it just wasn't a style that we were used to playing um so there was almost like a learning curve in that writing process. Uh, but besides that learning curve that we had to kind of get over just to even be able to write this kind of music, um, the writing process now is actually pretty awesome because what we before we even do anything, we demo something out. So um, there's dozens of things where I'll just demo out a chord progression and then I'll send it in our chat. And then, you know, Alex and Lenny uh, will comment on it. And they'll either say it's dog crap, you know, get it out of here. Or they'll be like, this is sick. Let's move forward. Um, so that was kind of how the, the writing process went, you know, because at the time I was living in Georgia, Alex was in SoCal, Lenny was in the Bay Area, and so pretty much no writing happened in the same room. Uh, oh. It was terrible. We, everything was just communication, sending it back and forth and bouncing off of each other's, you know, ideas. Thank God for technology, though, because we were able to send the actual audio. You know, we're not just sitting there playing guitar in a room to each other. We're actually able to send a semi-finished product. Um, so we can get a good idea of what it was going to sound like. And, and I would send, say, uh, a guitar track, and then Lenny would send me back him singing over that guitar track. And then I would add some drums to it, and then Alex could add bass and all this stuff. So, yeah. um, and uh, 
a, another thing that was like interesting about the writing process was like uh, while while these two were really plugging away at like the band stuff and just at these songs like I'm in Southern California I'm working my masters and it was just kind of like they would send me stuff and I'd be like oh I need to, I just need to do this now I just I just need to look I was like I need to do my work and I need to get this whatever but like I can't can't focus on that because now i have all these like music stuff in my head so <laughs> i would try to balance those two and it would just be like did you work on anything today no i i just sat at home and played bass and like <laughs> all these tracks and sent them. <laughs> uh, that's awesome that's cool is there a, a lyrical theme on the record oh yeah oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right so, let's get into it <laughs> so i mean it, I would, I would say there's a couple of themes. Uh, probably the biggest theme is this battle that's kind of going on inside yourself where you're looking inside yourself and saying, you know, maybe I am not the best person that I thought I was growing up. And like just that coming of age and realizing, you know, your faults and your weaknesses and just kind of like being at war with you know that part of yourself that you don't like so much yeah lyrically when we were writing this it was kind of, it's almost astonishing how songs that i wrote songs that you know alex and me wrote songs that lenny wrote though lyrics were written by different people like all three of us somehow connected to them so hard because we all were kind of going through some similar stuff at least you know during the course of this album uh which was insane you know there's a song on the album called drowning that me and alex wrote sometime between 2012 and 2013 as a completely different song and that song focuses a little bit on you know mental health struggles and stuff like that um so it's crazy that lyrically you know two separate members could connect so aggressively and heavily on one song um and kind of you know at the time we were all doing different things in life our passions have always been music yet we were all pursuing non-musical careers you know had pretty stressful lives alex was doing more school than i could ever even fathom <laughs> lenny was working in a union working like seven days a week 12 hours a day for like seven to eight months at a time not an exaggeration i might be under exaggerating seven days a week 12 hours a day for seven to eight months and i was trying to do school and full-time work <laughs> And so we're doing all these stressful things in life um, mixed with not pursuing our dreams. And we just kind of all fell into this horrible like depression that just hit us all in this weird time. And lyrically, I'm not saying that depression's good, but at least we got this album out of it. <laughs> so, it was just strange that to, to see all three of us going through a hard time at the same time and to be able to put that into an album. Yeah, who's the uh, female vocalist on Drowning? I really like that song. Uh, so that is one of my very good friends. Who uh, I mean, we've been friends for like 13 years now. Uh, Darian Tyner. Okay. So she's not like in any other bands or anything, but she's just someone who uh, was willing to help us out on the record. <laughs> yeah. It's special having her voice too because... A lot of the times, bands will just get some famous person to feature, um, but she's known all three of us for years. Uh, so her singing the words that you know we wrote, um, it meant a lot more coming from a good friend of ours as opposed to just some random person. Where'd that title come from, The Devil is a Gentleman? Uh, it, so it's a saying that I heard 
And basically what it means is like the devil isn't going to come and tempt you like, hey, you should go kill that person or you should kidnap that child. Like, <laughs> He's gonna he's gonna come and tempt you with stuff that sounds good, stuff that's appealing. So it's like he kind of woos you, you know. It's like <laughs> everything that you shouldn't be doing sometimes looks good. Is kind of the idea behind it. That's cool. Uh, you guys self released this record. Any plans to uh, shop it out or look for a label home? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Red Bull Records. If you're listening, we are available. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anybody at Red Bull. Let's see what we could do. <laughs> uh, I'd say hopeless too. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. You said you're working on new music. Uh, nobody nope. can tour or play shows yeah, right no. now. Um, so it's like, what are you doing next? That there's nothing you can do outside of right music. <laughs> yeah. Right. It, but what's what's your hopes for the future of uh, Down Again? I mean, I I think all of us, you know, we would love to turn it into a full time thing. You know, it it's a lot of work because we are all doing school or work in a full time capacity. So it it's really just getting our leftovers right now. Yeah. But. It, if we could get to a point where maybe we could only work part time and then this would be the full time job or, you know, just have little side hustles. Like, I, I think that would be the goal for all of us, really. Yeah, Agreed. for sure. Because we would love to do this as a job, but we love music so much where it's OK if that doesn't happen. Like, if it doesn't happen, if we don't do this full time, we're going to do it regardless. Uh, we'll keep writing music keep putting out albums even if it just never even if we never get famous enough to you know go on full-time tours we're still gonna write music and put out albums thanks for listening to as the story grows our theme song was written and composed by the legendary Bob Nana. If you like what you hear, subscribe on iTunes and give the show a rating and review. If you'd like to support the show financially, click on the Patreon link at asthestorygrows.com. If you enjoyed this episode, share it on social media with your friends. Much appreciated, and thanks for listening. I never felt so young and alive as when I'm diving. And now I'm learning as I listen along And the wheels are turning and I started a song What good word and I'm gone Oh, as the story grows The more I want to know The more I want What's that word?